Yeah, I, I thought that uh, we got contributions from a lot of guys, obviously. I think the thing that stood out today was just, you know, we've been talking to them a lot about strength and numbers. We've had good bench play, certainly on last year's championship team. Wouldn't have been able to do it without them. Thought guys really, really added a lot of value there. But this, this deal's a little different. As you can see, today we came at it with about nine, a nine-man rotation there for about 30-plus minutes. I thought everybody added value and played a role in the win. And, um, you know, we need everybody. I think it could be a real strength for us. I thought that was the thing that stood out. Is our cardio and our execution where it would typically be on December the 12th, you know, due to the 28-day hiatus? Uh, no. Uh, but – it's not going to do us any good to complain about that. We ain't getting it back. So our mindset has been let's take it one day at a time, see if we can get a little bit better every day. I thought today we took a step in the right direction and, like I said, got contributions from a lot of guys. And even the guys that played late last three or four minutes, you know, they all scored and contributed. So total uh, team effort by our guys. We've got to clean up some execution things and continue to get in elite level uh, condition. We're not there yet, but we'll get there. Talk about the play of Ali Ali and Jermaine Marshall today. They had yeah, they were terrific. They've been really good in practice. Both those guys have performed in practice well, consistently well. And so I'm not surprised by how they played. I got a lot of confidence in both guys. And both guys are Akron guys, man. They're tough. They play with effort. Their attitudes are tremendous. They're extremely coachable. And they care about other people. So when you have those qualities and you also have some talent, and your care factor's high and you want to get better and learn our system and know what you're doing, you got a chance to be pretty good and really impact our team. And certainly that's what Ali and Jermaine have done. Uh, Lauren Christian Jackson kind of left off uh, or started where he left off back in March. Uh, but for as quick as this game was, because it's one of the fastest games of basketball I've been a part of, uh, he had some quiet numbers, especially from the point standpoint, and but he was out there just doing his thing. Yeah, I mean, 19 and 9. If a couple of those guys would have made a couple dunks there on a couple lobs he thrown, he would have had a double double. I mean, he obviously tremendous leader. Um, you know, he and Tolls do a really good job of leading our locker room. So we got great leadership in there. And then on the floor, I mean, I've said this before. I mean, I've been doing it a long time. He's one of the best players in the country. You know, not just our league. You know, he's a terrific player. Uh, that can impact the game in a variety of ways. And uh, today was terrific. Um, I thought he had the guys ready to play. We had the right mindset today and the right heart set today about playing for each other. And we'll see if we can uh, see if we can build on it. You know, we haven't been hit in the mouth yet. That's when you find out, as you know, Tyson used to say, you find out a lot about your crew when you get hit in the mouth, then it's really on. Uh, but uh, I do like. Uh, you know, our camaraderie right now, our teamism right now, and we just got to continue to build on it. What do you, what do you think you're going to see in film? I mean, because especially with the quick turnover going into St. Bonaventure on Tuesday. Well, we'll take a look at it. You know, we started trapping a little bit there to start the second half, to start rotating, scrambling around a little bit, and I don't think we were great there. But, you know, we'll take a look at it and see what we can improve upon, um, you know, as individuals and uh, collectively, you know, how the guys can play better how we can coach better. You know, we talk about owning everything in our performance, coaches and players. And um, that's how we get better, and that's how we grow. So we'll do that very quickly and then start a two-day prep for a very good St. Bonaventure team. How much was the adjustment of how the layout of the gym and, and no fans, and like where, where, how our enthusiasm seemed to be up? And I know you've talked about that previously. Yeah, today was our first game, obviously. And um, so because of that, unfortunately or fortunately, depending on how you look at it. I've had an opportunity to talk to a lot of coaches that have been in this environment that we're currently in, and they've just emphasized, hey, it's so different without fans. You've, your team's got to create that energy and that enthusiasm, and a lot of that has to be done with their voices. They have to talk. I thought our bench was good in that regard today. Um, I thought our players did a good job of talking today. Uh, it is unique because the referees and the coaches, uh, uh, the opponent coaches, and we can hear what they're saying. They can hear what we're saying. They get play calls. We get play. It's just so different, you know, um, because you're, it's so clear uh, in terms of hearing what others are saying, which is very rare. We're not used to that. But we'll get used to it and adjust. But I thought our guys did a good job today from an energy enthusiasm standpoint. Uh, final thing, I guess, since fans weren't here to see it, 
and then only kind of see we miss them. the highlights. Yeah, just yeah. Uh, we miss our fans, man. You know, I was watching a little bit. I was sitting up eating pregame meal, and it may have been you, Chad, that put on the video from last year's Kent State game pregame video, and it just reminded me what the crowd was like that night and what it was like in the Ohio game, the game before that, and what it was like two couple games before that. And, you know, the old Field of Dreams deal, if you build it, they will come. And they, our, our fans sure did. Um, you know, I always said, you know, I always kind of look at it, and I'll tell our players, like, if I was a fan, I'd love watching you play, or I wouldn't love watching you play. Or, you know, I thought, you know, obviously we got a long way to go, but we're, I think we're building something special. And I think our fans started to recognize at the end last year when the last four or five home games were coming, like they came out in droves to watch them. And Zips Nation was great and was a big part of our, you know, ability to win it. Um, so we miss them. Uh, I wish you were here. But, uh, you know, obviously we've got to hope you'll follow us uh, in, in uh, you know, with videos like this, uh, pressers and, you know, some of the things we're doing online. And uh, just know we're thinking about you. We appreciate you. And hopefully – going through this, the silver lining in the cloud is that you start to appreciate and be more grateful for things maybe that you might take for granted. And uh, certainly not that we did that with our fans, but, you know, we certainly miss them, but we're going to try to make the most of the situation without them.